Good morning. I'm Andrew Horn in Louisville, Kentucky. I served in the United States Marine Corps for 27 years, serving in combat twice, first in Kuwait during Operation Desert Storm, and then again in Al-Ambar province, Iraq, in 2004 and 2005. I am proud of my service and very proud of those men and women currently in harm's way who are doing their best in a terribly difficult situation. When I deployed to Iraq, I believed what the President and his advisors told us about the necessity of the war. I believed that the decision makers in Washington would make sure we had everything we needed to get the job done and we wouldn't be there any longer than we absolutely had to. What I saw there changed my mind. I saw troops riding Humvees without the proper armor and units dangerously undermanned for the missions they were asked to accomplish. Most importantly, I saw that while we won every battle, there was little good we could do militarily unless the Iraqis took responsibility for resolving their political differences. Yet no one in Washington offered benchmarks for success that would motivate the Iraqis to resolve their differences and lead us home. In short, the Commander-in-Chief has failed to properly lead the troops, and previous Congresses didn't ask the tough questions or demand accountability. The result is a mess we are in today. This week, the majority in Congress has taken the lead in providing for our troops. Supplemental spending bills passed by the House and Senate provide a much-needed change in the President's Iraq policy. This legislation also provides billions for our troops, giving them the proper protection and training they need to survive in Iraq, as well as funds to fix Walter Reed, provide health care to our troops and veterans, and research and heal traumatic brain injuries that many troops suffer. Top generals who have served this nation with honor and distinction have endorsed what the House and Senate passed. The bills also closely mirror what was proposed by the nonpartisan Iraq Study Group that was appointed by President Bush. And finally, I know the troops both at home and in Iraq are eager to get what the bills provide. At the same time, these bills both demand something that previous Congresses did not, accountability from the administration. Both bills demand that the President continue to verify that we are moving Iraq towards stability and that we are on track to disengage our combat troops from the Iraqi Civil War by 2008. Accountability is something this administration has demanded of everyone else. Go to the website of the White House and put in a search for the word accountability. What comes up is a list of nearly 2,000 pages on the site that mention the word. Right there, in the President's first major policy proposal, the first bullet point in the brief on the No Child Left Behind Act reads, quote, Increase accountability for student performance, colon. States, districts, and schools that improve achievement will be rewarded. Failure will be sanctioned, close quote. It's ironic that an administration that has touted its commitment to tying accountability to funding or things like schools or social programs is so opposed to any performance evaluation of itself, especially with American lives on the line. Both houses of Congress have done their jobs and will soon finish a bill that will provide for the troops. When they are done, the only person who could keep funds from reaching the troops would be the President. If the President vetoes this bill because he doesn't want to formally demonstrate progress in Iraq, nowhere in our history would there be a more blatant example of a Commander-in-Chief undermining the troops under his care. There is absolutely no excuse for the President to withhold funding. And if he does exercise a veto, Congress must side with the troops and override it. As a loyal former Marine who loves my country, who is deeply concerned about our troops in combat and our veterans. I ask you, Mr. President, please do not withhold funding from our troops.
because you are afraid to change course and show progress in Iraq. Thank you.